In this lesson, we'll set up spaces and zones so that we can create a healing and cooling load report. So let's get started. All right, so I'm here in Revit and I'm in a 3D view, but I'm working in the mechanical template. And you could tell I'm in a mechanical template uh, by if you look left to the project browser, and you'll notice a couple of things different than when working in the other templates, like the architecture template. Um, you could see instead of floor plan and um, architecture, it's actually, you could see the word mechanical here. But when it comes to my floor plans, it's floor plans here, at level one mechanical, level two mechanical. And prior, or while working on this project, I went ahead and set up my levels. We'll jump to those real quick. I'll show you how, we're, how it's going to work later on. Um, I set up my levels for where exactly I want to place my mechanical. So we know in this course, we're going to be setting up mechanical here in our basement. That's going to be feeding through our floor and providing air for the first floor. And we're also going to set up a system here in the ceiling, which is going to have some uh, terminals in our ceiling providing air to the second floor. So before I went ahead, you know, it's really important to go ahead and set up all your levels. It makes placing models and placing components much, much easier, and it makes things much more organized and your workflow is just much more efficient. So, And another th difference about working uh, in this mechanical view, when I jump to my 3D view, you'll notice my model here is looks like all the lines are in a grayscale, um, and that's because this model is actually linked from an architectural template. And if you were to actually try to build things um, using architectural elements in the mechanical template, they would all turn out to this grayscale. But once you start placing mechanical elements, you'll actually see color items. So this um, architecture actually acts somewhat like a backdrop uh, for the mechanical equipment we'll be working on. So with, with, that, with that being said, um, let's go ahead and start separating our rooms uh, into zones so that we can start designing our HVAC system. And we'll start with the ground floor. So the great thing about setting up uh, zones and spaces and rooms is it makes it, it really organized when communicating um, to a mechanical engineer uh, which room we're specifying that has issues with the HVAC. Um, it also takes into account the area and the volume of each room um, so that we know the heating and cooling load requirements, which actually gives us or sets the pace for us to be able to start designing the system. So to set your rooms, um, we'll simply go on this room button here at the top. And I know there's two, sp the two spaces here. As long as you have four walls and a door, Revit's going to recognize uh, that area as a space here. So I know it's there, and in this space, I can set up my room with my room button. But in these other areas, I can't do the same just because we have these openings here. And that's not a problem at all because um, now we can just use our room separator button. And with that, I'm simply going to draw a line uh, in between these two rooms here acting kind of like a wall here. Uh, so now I have four walls that are enclosed and Revit will now recognize this as a room. So I'll do the same thing. We'll grab room, separa room separator. We'll do the same thing to this opening. And I'm just clicking and dragging. And I'm going to do the last one here. So now when I use my room separator tool, Revit should be able to recognize uh, these areas as rooms. So I'm going to go to room and do my kitchen, my dining area, and my living area. And I now have all my rooms separated. So now that your rooms are in place, uh, we can now go to the Analyze button. And let's set up our spaces. Um, if you wanted to, we can come in here and double click on Room and name the rooms. Uh, but these are room number one, room number two. And uh, I'm comfortable with that. But if you wanted to, you could say kitchen, dining room, and living room. But let's set our zone, our spaces up really quick. So now that our rooms are in place and the boundaries are already set, setting up the spaces is easy. It's just clicking inside those rooms we just created. And once you see that the borders are in red, that lets you know you are ready to go. Perfect. So now we have our spaces. And once your spaces are in place, we can now create zones. So I'm going to click on my Zone button. And I'm going to take the exact same approach we did in the previous two steps. Uh, I'm simply going to click inside. See, now you know the benefit of setting up the rooms beforehand. It's a lot less lines to draw and a lot less room separators, room separating to do. We have one more room to do here. And once I have all those uh, zones picked, I'm going to click my Finish Zone Editing button. And now that we have everything separated nicely, we can now generate a heating and cooling load report. Now, to do that, we simply go to this Reports button. We've got a number of reports in this drop-down. Uh, for now, we're going to focus on the heating and cooling load report. So I'm going to click that. And you can see the boundaries we put in place are shown here in our 3D model. 
And now what we could do is we can actually set some parameters like building type and building location. And this is actually a really neat tool. I really like how this one works. Uh, so for building type, I'm going to click on this drop down. And I think this is a, this will be a single family here. And I think they have an option for that. Perfect. And for location, this is really neat. I really find this helpful. Um, we could type in your location here. Uh, in our case, I'm simply going to type in or we could pick from another place. So we don't want Boston. We can go with, here's where we actually type it in. We can go Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And I'm going to click OK. See if we can find a better address here. There we go. Now it's nice in my location. And what that does, it'll take into account uh, what's going on in your environment around. So when it's looking at temperatures and all those parameters, it looks at your location. Um, so let's see, project phase, uh, we could keep it as existing. And we'll keep it at new, because we're actually placing in a new HVAC system. So you see there's a number of things we can actually adjust here. But my the two that I mainly focus on are the building type and the location. Oh, I know my ground plane here is not level one. It'll actually be my ground level floor because my level one really isn't touching the ground. There's a crawl space underneath there, so there will need to be some calculations done about that. All right, so once I have all those parameters set, I can click Calculate, and I'm going to let Revit do its thinking here. And we've just created a really nice heating and cooling load report. So we can look over this really quickly. We've got a project summary. We have project name. Um, because I put in our location, uh, it can actually find out the weather conditions. So we know right now we our longitude, our, our latitude. Uh, we know our summer temperatures. We know our mean temperatures. We know our winter temperatures. So this really helps us uh, with our design process. Um, so not only do we get things about weather, what about the zones and things we set up? We've got reports about these. So we have area, the square footage of our entire building, of each zone in here. Um, here we have our spaces that we set up. They're all allocated here nicely. Same thing, area square footage, uh, cooling. So this is a really helpful tool uh, to begin your design process. Once your floor plan's in place, it's good to have this information when you're sitting down with the mechanical engineer because it gives you a direction uh, to go towards as far as making sure um, you have the, your system set up for the proper heating and cooling loads. 